Welcome to Hidden Hand Puppets. Uh, we're just going to go through this video recording here as to how to unfold something in Peppercura Designer. So as you can see here, all I'm doing is creating a couple of very basic uh, geometric shapes. We're just going to show you a sphere and a cube. So the program I'm using here is 3ds Max. It's one I use for a lot of my modeling programs. There are other ones out there. There is uh, Sketchfab, there's Fusion 360, uh, there's many other 3D modeling softwares. This is just one I'm comfortable with as I've had previous experience. So what I'm doing here is just lining them on the x-axis and z-axis so I can then, uh, as I export them as a 3D object, uh, either an OBJ or an STL, uh, when I import them into the Peppercrew Designer to be able to unfold them, they will be uh, of a similar height and won't be below the Z level or uh, below ground level if you look at the uh, zero or the Z level that way. So right now I'm just scaling this one down. It's a cube, it's very basic. There's no real need to have it as large as a sphere. And again, just making sure they are on the Z0. So now I'm gonna export them as an OBJ. It just makes it easier for Peppercura Designer to import them. mind that one it was a previous previous test so we're gonna re-import them as a brand new model so we're just making sure that the faces are facing the right way that all the faces are on the right side and it's all aligned to the world how we want it so from here unless you deliberately specify your seam lines we just click unfold so as you can see here we have the cube and the spiral we're just going to take off the edit flaps because we don't need them when we're pattern designing so you can see here we've taken off the flaps. On this side here you'll notice it's all spiraled. It looks a bit cut up and a bit wonky. And because it's a, a sphere, we know we're going to pattern out uh, at least four versions of it. So we only need to really model and pattern one section of it. So right now I'm just uh, cutting off. Uh, so if you would have noticed, I use the uh, join tool. So right clicking the mouse in Peppercrew Designer brings up that menu. And then I'll select the piece I want to start building from and we'll start building out a quarter of the sphere into a pattern. So again, right click to get to the menu once you've orientated the piece that you want to work with. And pretty much uh, the green lines are for joining, red lines are for uh, separating the seams. And generally double clicking when you've got a green one uh, will bring the pattern over to the one you've got there. Now just remember if you do click uh, or double click to join, you'll notice I'm clicking on the piece that I want to stay. It'll attach those pieces to the perspective I'm in. If I was to find the uh, other piece uh, or the other piece of the puzzle that I wanted to connect to and clicked on that instead, you'd notice that it would actually go and join the other piece, removing it from my viewport and over to where the other piece is. So I need to make sure that you are clicking on your piece to join it. So again, back to join edge faces, you notice again, I clicked on the object to bring it to that object itself. So again, the green, it shows you where it's going to connect to. And you'll also notice there is a green arrow. So depending on which way the green arrow faces depends on, so you notice there, uh, which way the pattern is going to go and, uh, and move everything to. Now with most spherical objects that you do want to pattern, it's obviously very simple. Uh, you know, when we look at this one, you'll see uh, they're in um, almost a teardrop fashion, point to point with those curves. Uh, the reason why I've put the split down the middle is because of the size of the sphere and the curvature of the pattern. If I was to try and join it right through the center, there would be a lot of artifacts in between. Uh, there'd be more splitting down the sides, as you can see. Uh, so we reduce that by uh, skinning or peeling that in smaller pieces, but still keeping them adjoined at least at one point. So when we're looking at Peppercure Designer, what we're looking for is ease of pattern. So we don't need the entire pattern skinned and we don't need to print the entire pattern. We look for repeatability. 
um, and in terms of repeatability, I mean, so that creates um, ease of use, I guess. Uh, the old adage, keep it simple, stupid. So kiss, so we're trying to keep it as simple as possible, and if we have repeating patterns, then we only need to do it once, and then we just copy that pattern out several times. So right now we have the finished pattern, just moving all the excess parts of the model out the way. So when you're printing out your patterns in Pepper Crew Designer, you want to align them to using the least amount of paper possible. Now don't forget, if you do enjoy what I'm showing you here, please like, subscribe, and even comment on my videos just to show me that you are enjoying them. And if there's anything else you want me to do, please don't hesitate to drop a comment and let me know what you'd like to have me do next. So what I'm doing here, I chose uh, in the menu setting uh, edge color or edge tool, something like that. And then you've got the eraser setting there. And I'm just going through and erasing all the lines that we don't need in the pattern. Obviously we just want the outer, outer lines to create our pattern. So in this case being the sphere, spherical object, the ball, uh, we just want the outer lines and the inner cut line. And all I'm doing is just clicking and dragging my mouse, highlighting those lines that I want to erase and it's as simple as that. So now we're left with our outline of the pattern piece that we want to create the pattern from. You can do this, I'm creating notation. So right now we need now know that we need four pieces of this pattern to create the sphere. So I'm just creating the mark there. As you can see there, I've highlighted the piece that I've sliced and you can see on the model itself, it is one quarter of that sphere, so it's a repeating pattern. And then with the cube, you'll notice that the cube has a lot of dashed or dotted lines. Those are considered valley, valley or fold lines. And again, just making a, a note on the pattern itself. So if I decide to transfer this and create a vector file out of it and um, uh, create patterns through PDFs, uh, then I can then transfer these markings and notations over to the vector file. So here you can see the warning saying that the uh, paper layout and the printer settings aren't the same. So I'd ask uh, if you'd like to change it or uh, to rescale it to suit the printer settings. After this was printed, I realized uh, as I went to that the print settings themselves were, like I said, set in portrait, uh, landscape, not portrait. So I switched it back and reprinted out a second amount. And that's all there is to it. So obviously more complex shapes will have a bit more stitching and, and uh, slicing to do. But I hope this is uh, helpful and anything else you'd like to see a tutorial on, uh, leave a comment and I'll try and record one as soon as I can.